in that in that that frame of mind, it carried the day. It carried the day on a very very emotional roller coaster. And before that, when was the last time you had seen them? Once a year, because they come. I saw them grow in stages. When I left home, they were like <clears throat> two, one, and seven months. Hello. Hi, we're with the Navigators Group going to the Methodist Men's Meeting. Okay. The Interfaith Chapel? Yeah. Did you jump in it before? Yeah. Uh, you, need you need the driver's license? Yes, sir. Uh, no. I don't think so. You don't have any weapons or drugs? No, no sir. I think we're good. Okay, thank you. I cannot imagine what is about to take place here. We've got Dan Nelson, this gigantic canvas here, he's going to paint the whole time during the show. I think you'll be ministered and blessed by him as well. My parents greet you. They would love to be here. They're on their way to Washington, D.C. for the National Day of Prayer. Oh, good. Thank you. unique situation here with a warden who loves Jesus Christ, who believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. Our country's under attack right now. Franklin Graham has a son in Afghanistan on his fourth tour duty right now, and a week ago the Pentagon uninvited him to pray for our nation's military overseas because they certain people were offended by the things that he has to say. Uh, those same people are trying to kick the National Day of Prayer out of our governmental offices completely, so it is a blessing to be here with people today that love the Lord Jesus Christ, who pray openly, who believe in the healing power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, who are you talking? I'm talking. My name is Ryan Dobson. We're going to the radio station. All right, you want to do it now for real? See? It? Oh, really? Yeah. We might use it. We might not. Come on, come on. Say it's Ryan Dobson. We're heading to Meat Shack at the radio station. Let's go. Let's go. Uh. What's your official name for Thailand? My, my DJ name? Whatever we want titled on that interview <laughs> um, with Ryan. I need oh, that, oh, no, 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 put my real, but that's, that's, that was a real interview, so I'm going to use my so real name. Real, my real name is Safar Sutton, and he's been on KLSP 91.7, Angola, the incarceration station, the only one in the nation, the station that kicks behind the bricks. <laughs> I like that. I got to memorize that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Someone from the outside coming in, what would be offensive if I said, if I, you know what I mean? If I'm talking to someone who's on the inside. What would be offensive? Like, what would you think would be offensive? And then I'll tell you. Oh, trick. <laughs> you know, well, like, how long have you been on the radio here? I've been on the radio, man, about maybe seven years. I've never done any of these things things like this, but um, been always been very textile, you know, hands-on type things and working with my hands, so um, the auditory skills, I, I think I got honest. Um, my mom used to always be talking on the phone to doctors and lawyers, and I'd be always amazed, like sitting looking in her mouth. She'd say, "Hold on, excuse me a minute. What I tell you about looking in my mouth? Get on out of here." <laughs> so I, w I would go, and I wouldn't go very far, and I'd turn around and come back, and I would like, "Whoa!" So when I got to be like a teenager, and we get into it, I start speaking in her voice. Oh, just go, just just get out of my face. Go, go, kind of kind of thing. Like so, I really didn't know. I was using it as kind of like a rebellion tool. But then I come to find out that it would serve as be one of the greatest gifts that God has ever given me. Yeah. Uh, the ability to speak and communicate with people. Not only am I the program director here and I work for the radio station, but I do tours. The kids that come into this prison, those who are unassuming, thinking that they have it all, know it all, yeah. but then they don't realize how easy it is for them to wind up in a place like this. Oh, absolutely. And then they also don't really get a chance to understand the true value of an education. So I try to compare the two and show them the importance of it. One of the most striking things I find out when I'm talking to these young people is that they group up according to this demographic and it's, it's very painful and interesting at the same time. When I ask the question, how many has a parent or uh, a guardian in prison? Almost overwhelmingly. Hmm. How many are growing up or have grown up in single parent homes? Almost overwhelmingly. Yeah. And so I started to look at some of those things and say, wait a minute, 
the connective tissue here and these they're they're grouping they're pairing up together and they're making some of the life, same life choices mm -hmm. because of this great suffering this great pain this great void inside of themselves and so they are grouping with each other not really even discussing their pain it just somehow uh, they are connected to each other sure. kind of like magnet this this magnetic field that is drawing them to each other and it kind of exists which uh, uh, creates a very big haven for like gangs that get involved in mm -hmm. gangs and, and criminal activity. They're forming a family of their own. A absolutely. They don't have one at home that's taking care, care of them. Of them. Right. Especially because if you've got a single parent at home, they're right. working more hours, right. they're not able to be at home that much. Absolutely. You have that commonality, you start right. grouping together. And so I just took that and coupled with radio talent and skills and so learning learning this became a different way of uh, understanding how to reach people. Sure, I, one of the things is is um, prison radio is a lot different from everyday radio. Mm -hmm. Does this uh, does this station just go to the prison? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Eighteen thousand acres. We have one hundred watts FM. Uh, we sit so low below sea level, oh. so at the top of the antenna, I'm getting like 75, 85 watts, and so yeah. uh, on an overcast day, you know that signal will bounce, and so sometimes we're in New Rose, Baton Rouge, in different areas, yeah. but primarily um, 10 miles outside of the gate, that signal will fade out, mm -hmm. and so, but this radio station caters to the upkeep of the men here in the prison in a very different way than uh, any other radio station. Mm -hmm. But they'll, they'll start to make requests and, and different things that they want to hear. And would you dedicate that to? And, you know, so they get the chance to really hear their voice over uh, my voice, you know, giving them a oh, shout yeah. out or mm -hmm. anything like that, birthdays and yeah. different things. You get a chance to speak into people's lives so they get to understand. And I think for me, the most interesting thing is I've always been the same on air and in person. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so the personality. Character, right, right, this person right, right, everywhere. That's, everywhere. I'm the, the same way. I, I go to radio stations and I'll be interviewing the people and they'll talk just like this. And then the mic turns on and they're a cartoon character. Yeah, I can't and do it. I can't do it. I start laughing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What do you find with uh, people that are in Angola is what are they? What resonates with them? What's making a difference in their lives? What do you find where you're playing either programs or music or something where you're getting more responses back of, oh, hey, I like that or I want to hear more of this? Is it? Okay, now here, here in Angola, there's something spiritual going on seven days a week. But we try to meet uh, the diversity in the prison, like on uh, this afternoon, Friday afternoon, he's going to play some oldies but goodies for the guys. And so you're going to get a demographic of the mm -hmm. older guys who are coming out of that uh, maybe 60s and 70s and you know maybe some 50s era, he's going to play some of that music like that for them. Mm -hmm. Saturday generally is my show and at 1 o'clock from 1 to 6 for the basically the 70s and the 80s and 90s generation they're gonna really appreciate it because I'm gonna play some R&B for them. Yeah. Some some really love music and they be like, man, you be having me crying, man, you be having me crying. How do you put the music together? I say, well, I play it like I, I like to listen to it. Sure. And because I like to think I'm a very compassionate person, mm -hmm. a very affectionate person. So music that resonates with that type of vibe with me, I play it. And yeah. it could be just a lyric in a particular song that'll lead me to a, the next song, mm -hmm. to the next song. I don't just um, well, pop music in a hits CD. people in a different way. Yeah, there's an emotional level. It's not right. just talking, but right. you hear something and it's like, oh, remember when? when yeah. I remember where Straight, I was when I heard and I this. I get that all the time. It, he's man, I was at high school and that song come out. Yeah, they give whole stories. There's a whole story. story. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, I got got boost boost on something because I think that every now yeah. and then you know, remember the radio, you know, be playing in my truck and yeah. like, oh my goodness, I remember the first time I heard this. So, I don't know. And so, you know, then you get, uh, of course, the uh, spiritual side of it. Yeah, what kind of shows do you play?